Uh, are we rolling? Yes. Right. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the September 12th meeting of the Infrastructure Task Force. Can you take the roll, please? Mr. Angeli? Here. Mr. Grabski? Mr. Liberi? Here. Mr. Ladd? Mr. Marshall? Mr. Partington? Yeah. Mr. Walters? Here. Mr. Zeldman? Here. And Chairman Mullen? Here. Yeah. Uh, for the record, Mr. Ladd is no longer with us. Is he no? Did nobody tell you? No. No, he resigned. Why? He resigned. Didn't like him. Yes, I, I, we will miss him. I'm sure we will. Okay. Um, approval of the agenda. Move to approve, Madam Chair. I have some issues with the agenda, if I may. Is this the appropriate time to bring it up? Uh, as, as, um, as soon as somebody is second. Some, well, somebody second. Said, okay, I have yeah. some issues. Okay. Um, I, um, I had wanted to have a discussion of the, um, the new water treatment plant. And I sent around or I requ I asked, requested that you all be sent a copy of the only known document related to the new water plant at this moment, which is that PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. which I'm, I'm assuming everybody got. And I also uh, wanted to have a discussion of the uh, comprehensive agreement. App apparently, that is not possible because the comprehensive agreement is not done yet, right? Uh, I received an email this morning that has a very rough draft copy of it. Okay. Nobody in the staff has reviewed it yet, and I haven't even opened it up yet. Then, to then we, at this moment in time and space, there is no comprehensive agreement for us to review. Well, but I do want us to have a discussion about the document that is on the table now and the discussion that was had at the commission meeting uh, last week, uh, such as it was. And fish, you know, talk amongst ourselves if we have any questions and concerns and how we uh, want to proceed, um, because the commission is theoretically going to be adopting this or approving this comprehensive agreement at the October 18th meeting which to me is like mind blowing since nobody has actually reviewed it and seen it, but that's their decision. That's not, we are not part of that decision making process. So I'm wondering if there is somewhere on the agenda that we could um, add the uh, discussion about the uh, uh, materials that were distributed to the commission uh, on the water treatment plan. Yes. Yeah, you, we can add it. The, the problem that we are faced mm -hmm. with is the fact that we are talking about a very important issue that went before the commission without having a notification of such. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the problem. Uh, I, I, I understand that. And perhaps maybe we should just put it back down under the general general comments. That would probably we, we suffice. We do have an item, Stantec presentation uh, in fiscal year increase on water rates. Yeah, but that brings up the same issue that uh, <clears throat> that's yeah. deceiving. That's the agenda item, and we've taken yeah. on to a full-blown discussion of the water treatment plan. That's really but would it be kind of appropriate to ask under that item, for example, what is, does the current state of the agreement uh, speak to or update in terms of that um, projected increase? In terms of the increases in the water rates, yeah. yes, absolutely, because so that that's part of that. that yeah, but I was talking more about the physical plant and yeah. the cost of the plant and <clears throat> who's. Get, get who's been negotiating the, the plan. So, but anyway, um, I understand and I appreciate your, your perspective on yeah, this. Yeah. And we've been called out on this very item on several occasions. So I will take that advice and I will bring it up under my comments, general comments, rather than change okay. the agenda. Okay. Is that acceptable? So we have a, um, an acceptance and a second. Everyone in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay, approval of the minutes of August 1. Has everybody had an opportunity? Yes. yes, Peter. Wait, so, wait, wait. Wait, wait. First, on, first. Put them on the table. Put them on the table. <laughs> move, move to approve the minutes. Uh, second. With or without and uh, production. And then James second. is seconding second. it. And then Peter has some comments. So page, I'm, I'm confused. Page four, under three. Uh, I'm a, uh, one, one. Third paragraph, Omar stated that the city is awaiting another contract with consultants to continue this study. It's expected this, that the contract will go to the city commission for approval in September. In addition to this contract, the city is conducting other types of water quality testing for its wells. 
And then we have the next paragraph talks about an interim agreement with the contractor who will operate the new water treatment plant. So in that second paragraph there, under three, are you talking about the P3 team? It says, you said, the city has signed an interim agreement with the contractor who will operate the new water treatment plant. The agreement allows the contractor to undertake further analysis of the selected site, as well as a pilot program at the existing fire batch. Yeah, that is. So what they did is they went out to the prospect site, they did some uh, borings and analysis to figure out the siting. Who, who is they? Sorry. The P3 the IDE Ridgewood team and specifically Kiwit, who is the construction entity for them. They did uh, okay. uh, exploration at the site to figure out where, where it could be sited and how we would connect in with the, uh, the well fields and uh, so what is the contract with consultants in the first paragraph that Omar talked about? He's awaiting another contract with consultants to continue this study. Okay, that was uh, that's that, yeah, but that's for the well field mm -hmm. uh, appeal, Dixie, uh, Chen Moore. That's the one that I was explaining that we still don't have a, a contract with a consultant to, to proceed with the phase two and three. And so how does that interface with what the P3 contractor is doing? Peter, may, can, I, can I make a suggestion, Peter? We're talking about minutes. We're not trying to, yeah, well, yeah but you know, I mean, I think he's answered your question in that the, the contractor referenced in that sentence is the water treatment plant contract. And then it goes on talking about that. I think it's a little confusing to keep referring to the P3 team as a contractor. That's all. But so if that's why it was said. I can, so Chen Moore was doing a study of the wells even before we started all this. Remember we talked about we it talked a year about ago? This. That is what I'm talking about there. We don't, we don't have a contract in place for the consultant to continue those phases. The pilot or the ID the island is referring to, that's, that's different. It's a pilot system that they use different membranes to see which one is the best suited for the water, you know, uh, conditions, etc. But that's different than that. Are we comfortable calling the P3 team the contractor going forward? This is a discussion. Yeah. Really? This, I'm, 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 let's just approve the minutes. Let's approve the minutes and then have we, the can have, we can have that discussion under any yes. other topic, on, even general. Yes. But let's approve the minutes, shall we? Yes. Well, okay, unless anybody has any other, I don't know, Peter. So I have, I we guess. We have indulged a lot of people on minutes. All right. Okay? I'm, 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 Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm sure everybody <laughs> else appreciates it. Okay. Everybody in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Okay, moving along. Okay, we're going to start with old business, public works projects, funding request priorities. I assume that is why all of our lovely people from budget is here, right? And, and we briefed you all on our priorities. We uh, put together a budget and it passed on the first reading, the CIP and on the operational sides. Second reading is tonight. There was no significant, actually I don't think there was any real changes in the public works side at all uh, between the first reading and second reading, so we expect it to go very smoothly. Wonderful. That's great. That's wonderful. Of course, we would all like to have seen double the amount of money go into sidewalks and street paving, but it is what it is. I, I will point out again that we had a 50% increase in both Did of those increase. from last year. So not, not as much as anybody would like, but definitely better than we were last year. That's right. Okay, and we got to keep up that process. So that, that was the entirety of that item. Okay. Federal and state funding presentation. Now that's something that we've been asking for for a while. Who's going to be doing that? I don't think we have a presentation. Uh, we probably need to get Daphne to come in and talk. I, uh, I would say that um, we don't have a presentation. We have submitted several grant applications over the past month and a half. So, uh, uh, yeah. In the past month, we've submitted 4.3 million for state of Florida local support grants, 28.9 million for state of Florida resilient Florida grants, and 23.2 million in federal bridge investment program applications. Of course, these are just the initial applications were prepared and submitted in. They'll have to go through a lot of hoops and hurdles before we see if we're, if we're successful or not. But 
what we are working very aggressively to identify the opportunities and to uh, to link them up with our priority projects. Okay, so this we are we are going after some of that Ron DeSantis state money. Is that what that money is? We are going after state money, and also we're preparing for all of the federal grant opportunities that are Excellent. coming. Excellent, Peter. You had questions about this. Um, Chair, um, was it at the last meeting we were distributed this handout that I think went to the commission? It's an Aiken Gump presentation by I think a lobbyist mm -hmm. for the commission. Um, and does this item relate to that handout? It was at the last meeting. I didn't put a note on it. It's got the date on it, the first of August. Um, so, um, Laura Reese, Director of Office of Management and Budget. So um, we have federal lobbyists and state lobbyists that they share with us opportunities as they come up, and they also help us to advocate once we've applied for the grants. The grants that Alan just spoke about um, for the state, we would submit them, and then our federal lobbyists would, or I'm sorry, our state lobbyists would still represent us um, at different meetings in Tallahassee help to advocate for the programs. So that report probably was opportunities um, at a federal level. Aiken Gump is a federal lobbyist. So periodically they come in, they share with the commission um, upcoming opportunities and items like that because they represent us. Um, yeah. So I think even since this was presented to the commission, we, the country now has the Inflation Reduction Act and the point that I wanted to make is it seems like going back to the initial COVID Relief Act and all the subsequent things, there's basically a tsunami of federal money available. And shame on us if we don't get some things out of this because this seems to me to be like a once in a lifetime opportunity with all, there's literally trillions that has been approved in the last two and a half years. Well, I, I would also ask, we're building a water treatment plant for a half a billion dollars, close to. Where is that? Are we going to go after some of that infrastructure funds to help with that project as well? I mean, I know that, I know you guys are, are, are looking for every penny under the couch to see, but it seems to me that, you know, a, a big project like this should be like number one on the list to try and help reduce our costs uh, in this res in, re in regards to the water treatment plant. Didn't we have a lady um, that was in strictly involved in pursuing the federal money and stuff of that nature? Yeah, there's somebody. No, somebody. that was Daphne. She was our state lobbyist oh, and representative. Okay. And she's I, also she's also an economic development person. Okay. Yeah. No, but I'm, I'm you know, it, I I think Peter's got a point here. That there's we're in a period now where everybody is going to be looking at these funds and to take it on a sort of an ad hoc basis where we'll look, we'll, we'll take this project and go for this money and we'll take this project and go for that money. Maybe there's a more organized and proactive way to do this. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure you guys have been thinking about this. Could you just share with us what your thoughts have been? Again, Laura Reese, Director of Office of Management and Budget. We do have a centralized grants management process. So we've laid out the process um, that we go through. And so essentially the federal lobbyists or our staff, there's certain websites. They post, um, no, it's called Notices of Funding Opportunities or no, NOFOs on the federal site. And so we look at them, we see if we would qualify because some only relate to Indian reservations or you know different, different governments. So we'll review every um, opportunity determine if we apply and then there are grant administrators in each and every department so public works has one or two and their folks would actually be drafting the grants because a lot of um, what's required is what the engineering folks do so they add the value where they're developing the project scopes um, cost estimating and doing all of that and then we have to identify a city match because in order to be competitive they want to know that the city has some skin in the game so a lot of what we look at is our CIP plan so we have a five-year um, established community investment plan and what we'll do is we'll leverage the funds in our CIP in order to apply for grants because those are our highest priority projects so that's our 
that's our strategy is to look at every notice of funding opportunity see which ones we're eligible for align that with our projects that are aligned in the cip and then the real work is on public works and the project managers and developing um, the scope um, the city commits the match in a specific way where the city manager signs off on the match that we're committing to make sure we do have funding in place if we do get the project wouldn't that warrant with that amount of money to do what you did for state funding is to get somebody in here specialized for fed funding to go after and maybe know some shortcuts in which to, to go after it as opposed to looking for it on the internet right so we have um i want to say two or three grants so daphne who you spoke about she's in charge of governmental affairs she's a city employee and so she is um dedicated to that function and working with our lobbyists we have several hundred thousand dollars we spend each year on lobbyists both federal and state and that actually is their job to help us navigate those processes um to you know identify opportunities to get us those conversations at the state and federal level with the folks to help us to a, a, lot, a lot of those programs require you to have a shovel ready project to meet a lot of criteria. Right. So we know it, the big bins that they're looking at and the timing when that information will come up, we don't know exactly what the criteria will be to select which project will go in. So we, we're putting together a list of here's a high priority projects that we would like to have considered, uh, but we're, we're sequencing based on when the federal government releases to the state and then the state gives enabling guidance to put in the application. So we're really constrained in our work by how their process is. So it's not like we could go out there and like hustle money. We have to wait for them to tell us, we got these projects, we got this money, you're gonna get this money, and then we go. Yes, and and if you submit applications mm -hmm. and it doesn't meet the criteria, you're, you're non-competitive, you're wasting, you're wasting time. time. So, and you don't wanna be at odds with other projects you're submitting and you know, no. You, you got to put in the ones you think you're really going to get. Okay. I think. And, yeah, and I can share, I think the city, Alan and his team have done a great job of lining up um, all the stuff we're planning to do. The city's well prepared because we're already intending to do a lot of water sewer work with upcoming bond issuances and stormwater work. So they've done a lot of that preliminary work. So our applications are going to be really good and strong when they move forward. Um, we've already gotten, I, I don't know if you shared the DEO, $10 million from the DEO, which we got around a year ago, so we're engaging in that project for Melrose. Was it Melrose? Yeah. Or Durs? Durs. That was Durs. We for also Durs. got $1 million for Melrose Manor. Yeah, and $1 million for Melrose Manor. All that's real money that, you know, offsets. Um, or it allows us to do more. Sure. With what the city's already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, Peter. So to ask a specific question, uh, in this presentation by King County, the commission, mm -hmm. they um, identify and one of the opportunities, they say, is funding for the new river crossing tunnel. So the direct question would be, is anybody actively working on finding money from these yeah. new sources for that? Yeah, so I was in a meeting on, I believe it was Friday about this. So the first um, grant that I know of that we're actively pursuing is it's called Chrissy. C-R-I-S-S-I, -S -S -I, um, and it's related to railroad safety. So the angle they're taking is um, that, you know, by going underground, um, that it creates some safety enhancements. So they're taking certain pieces of um, a notice of funding opportunity that went out, and um, they're going for the Chrissy grant. That's the first one that I'm aware of. And they're engaging with a federal lobbyist on how to best do that. So just to follow up, they were identifying the possibility of a RAISE grant, R-A-I-S-E. Projects will have significant economic impact and improve trans transportation infrastructure, uh, blah, 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 um, <laughs> regionally significant. So that, that may be a second one we go for. I'm not sure if there has been a notice of funding opportunity on that one. So a lot of times they'll get large pots of money at the federal level and they have to um, the agency will get the money. They have to develop the criteria before we can apply. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we did a memo to the commission. I can share it with Chris or Alan to share with you, and it kind of goes through the process. That would be that would be excellent because that it's always been a concern of ours, and funding is in our mission. Yes. So um, I'm, I feel I feel much better now knowing that that's the way. It's it's not like you go and get. It's you wait for it to come, and then you get you get you have to be ready. 
Okay, thank you very much. It would be also interesting, Alan, to see what those uh, 8.3, 28.9, and 23.2, uh, those grants, what they were for. We, we can yeah. send that. That'd be good. Okay, federal and state. All right, we're on to new business. Presentation by the Office of Management and Budget. And, and, and that was the presentation pre previously. Or do we have a new uh, presentation? So, Laura Reese, Director of Office of Management and Budget. Um, do you have it loaded, the presentation loaded on there? So sit down here and press. memo that Peter was referencing at the August presentation? Um, well, not what I put together. Um, so, and I don't know if what I put together is what you had in mind, so stop me if it's not. So again, Laura Reese, Director of Office and Management and Budget, I was told that you asked for a little bit of an overview about the budget process and what was funded for Public Works, is that right? Or I can go in whatever direction y'all would like, but um, we just put together some, like a high level summary. So we started developing the operating budget for 23 um, in January. So we do the kickoff, we provide documents, instructions for everyone. So this has been going on for a while. Tonight's our second public hearing. So if all goes well, it'll be approved and it gets implemented as of October 1st. So um, I thought I would- Laura, we got the clicker. Yeah. Are you guys got the clicker? Yeah. <laughs> do you want me to grab it? I was like, somebody's clicking for me. So, um, so we, again, um, we thought we'd give you a little overview of what the public works budget is, understanding that's what you wanted to look at. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So public works has a variety of different funds. And as you know, um, depending on the funding source, um, you're competing for different pots of funds. The general fund has a lot more people competing for it. The water sewer fund, um, it's really public works is kind of running the show based upon the right structure and what it will support. So um, the first one is the general fund. So from 2020 to 2023, um, it grew from 22 to 26 positions. So uh, additional four, the budget there is 6.3 million. Um, what we thought we would share is um, new initiatives what were, that were funded. So essentially how we build the budget is we build a current service level budget. And what that is, is what does it take to fund the same service level that you provided in 2022 and 2023? And so an example of that is if we're funding a water trolley and we were running five days a week for eight hours a day, that would be current service level. So if the contract um, was rebid and it's a higher amount, that's still current service level budget. So if it went from 100,000 to 120,000, we would consider that 120,000 the current service level budget for the water trolley. Meaning we um, inflate the budget for costs, but we don't enhance service levels in the base budget. And then what we ask is that the departments put together decision packages um, where we're um, either looking to change service levels, so either reduce service levels or enhance service levels, and those are considered um, after we build the current service level. So current service level is going to cost us, in the water trolley example, 100000 or I'm, I'm sorry, 120000 and if they want to increase hours from eight hours to 10 hours, it might be 150000 we'd have them put together a $30,000 decision package to say we'd like to enhance service levels. That's gonna cost us 30,000. So that's like a simple example of how we build the budget. So we build current service level, we have um, decision packages where we can add or take from the service level funded in the prior year. Gotcha. 
um, we call it a modified zero based budget. Um, so last year, the new initiatives or the enhanced service levels that were um, in the general fund for public works was a roadmap to net zero carbon emissions. It's $150,000 was um, included in the proposed budget. Um, a sidewalk master plan gap assessment for 180,000. Um, pavement condition assessments for $510,000 and um, additional staffing. So in fiscal year 23, we're adding five additional FTEs if the budget's passed tonight um, to do roadway maintenance. So that's, yeah, that's a $500,000. Wait, 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 Jen's got a question. Okay, sure. So roadmap to net zero carbon emissions plan, 150000 Just that. You're going to spend 150 for the plan. Is well, what does that mean? Uh, Alan, do you want to speak more about this? See, these are all requests that came from Public Works, so they would be a little bit more. And Dr. Nancy Gasman is the one who's overseeing that. But uh, me and Chris worked on a similar effort in Miami, so I'm very, very familiar with this topic. When you when you do your uh, your assessment to figure out your carbon footprint, you determine you have uh, it's based on primarily transportation, buildings, facilities, and then. Uh, a bunch of smaller categories, but uh, you figure out how much is coming out of vehicles. So the roadmap is if I can increase my public transportation by this percentage and cut these number of vehicles, how much will it impact okay. your carbon emissions to get down? And you have to put all those together and figure out uh, 80, 90, 100 different steps that you have to take, each one which will have an incremental improvement that will get you down to that net zero point over a period of 20 or 30 years, whatever your goal is. So the, the roadmap would be to identify all the areas that we can make them in and then what steps would be necessary and how long would it take to implement them to get to that carbon neutral posture that we'd like by 2050. So the, so the money goes to development of this plan. Yes. Yes. And you bring in a specialist or consultants or is there you guys just hire somebody temporarily or it, it, it would be a consultant to do it there's a lot of uh, very technical aspects to carbon neutrality so you would have to have somebody that brings that expertise okay. to you all right thank you okay cool okay. great what so this general fund I, I moved up here because i didn't have to click anymore i found that i had to click here so yeah sorry about that i was i was staying back there because i thought i needed to manually do it um so this general fund um public works sanitation fund really has been um pretty oh, oh, oh consistent over the years um but when you say consistent it's, it's rising every year yeah so the cost of every service really rises right. year over year um if i was sort of speaking to the number of ftes so if you if you look there's um seven pretty consistently seven ftes the cost of service goes up every time we rebid it and mm -hmm. we're actually expecting that to happen again this year so the current budget for 23 which is 18 million dollars that in, that includes the current level level service. well the current level of um, expense related to our contractor we expect that the bid will probably come in higher which may result in a need for a rate adjustment mid-year when we get that bid okay so but we didn't have the new number so we budgeted based upon the old number um, so again the current service level um, Plus the addition, so in 21, curbside recycling and collections was added. It had an ongoing cost of 342,000. 22, groundwater monitoring and methane at Wingate landfill, and there was no additional costs in 23, that, or no additional program enhancements in 23. Um, water sewer fund. Um, as you know, this is supported by rates paid on the water sewer bill, including um, some agreements with our large users, Oakland Park, Walton Manors, and others. Um, this budget has grown from 79 to 80 million, and there are 352 FTEs in the Public Works Department. There's some additional um, positions in the Finance Department that run the utility billing that are also funded from this. So we're only talking about people here. No, this is the this is the operating budget. It, it's operating not people, the capital though. projects, but it's not everything cap. else. Yeah, this is operating. We'll get to capital, but okay. I thought I'd give you a little overview. That's of good. No, it's it's, it's interesting. Funded. What what that twenty twenty one was a real hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was a less of an operating budget. 
So, and, you know, this includes some one-time things. You really have to kind of dig into the details if um, you want to compare apples to apples. So, um, for example, the, the sources that they talked about for one-time studies, if that's in a year or a one-time improvement that's not considered capital in nature, it would show an increase in one year and then it would go back down in the next year. Um, but there's a few major new initiatives funded in the Water Sewer Fund, uh, the Leak Detection Program and professional services for the new five ash water treatment plant that was to fund the consultant to develop our scope um waterway quality monitoring sorry could you, could you develop our scope who, who yeah so for? it was considered an owner's rep when we put that in the budget in 21 it was going to be somebody who would help us to navigate the process of procuring it Didn't ourselves that turn out to be hazen and sawyer that is hazen and sawyer so that would be a one-time cost that would then not be in the next year's budget. For example, um, valve maintenance services, a half a million in ongoing costs were added to, was it to exercise the valves? Yes, yes. So that was the new program, cooperative study with Broward. So in 23, so this is including the proposed budget, a cooperative study with Broward County for the variable density model and additional water distribution maintenance costs. Um, I think just the price of it's just a vehicle maintenance. Or just a truck. Huh? It's just, it's just a truck. truck there for the back. Oh, that's just a truck. Okay. The, oh, I'm sorry. That's a vector truck, which is expensive. Four hundred thirty. Certainly is. Yes. 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 Yeah. So. That variable density. Yeah, I was going to say that was a little nerdy, but I was going to say let's ask that question anyway. It, it is mapping out the saltwater intrusion line to see how what how far it is from impacting our wells. Oh, well, that's very important. And that's what the county is doing. For, for all the cities, and we've been we've been assured that we're in no danger momentarily. We or the west. We are right now, but also uh, the more you map it, you can see how it's moving, moving closer or further away. In this case, it's usually moving closer, and then you can be prepared for when you might have to make some changes to your system. That's because all of the groundwater is being sucked into the gravity sewer veins, allowing the saltwater intrusion. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moving along. Okay. <laughs> Central Region, we're partners, um, we're oh. the leading partner with um, neighboring entities to treat wastewater. Mm -hmm. So um, this is um, primarily funded by the city of Fort Lauderdale, you um, rate payers, but also through Oakland Park um, and a few others. Important question. How come we're giving them back to $2.3 million to Oakland Park? Yeah, so with that? yeah, it's actually almost $3 million. It was like two point nine million. million. Yeah. That's got to come out of something million. somewhere. Well, it's just lost revenue to the water system. Which means to that all of our projections of having that money to use are not correct, correct anymore. Correct. Well, I, I think it's something that they've been aware of for several years. They just finally get to the point to bring something to the commission. So they've been holding on to that amount, recognizing that. Yeah, but That was showing as a revenue. Previously. Yeah, but uh, it had to do with the agreement that we had with them did not reflect the 25% increase in rates when we came up with the new agreements with all of them mm -hmm. and uh, they had a provision in their contract or their agreement that said that they shall not pay more than Fort Lauderdale residents oh. so as they were negotiating with the city manager involvement it, and they finally had a uh, uh, mediator come in it was agreed that they would split it 12 and a half percent so that is what uh, that 2.9 million is uh, the difference between the 25 that we were wanting them to pay for the surcharge and what we finally agreed. So we, they had now, a, now they are at so the, now we have a new contract that says they pay 12 percent more. 12.5 percent, yes. 12 .5%. More, what? Less? They pay more than Fort Lauderdale residents. Okay. All all of the other cities will pay a surcharge on top of what Fort Lauderdale residents pay because we're providing water to them under a, a large water user agreement. Yeah, and I was going to ask about this. So the 2.95 was a write-off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, where I, does it yeah. where does it get written off? Is that just future revenue mm -hmm. or how are you? Well, so, so there's two pieces of it. The first piece was they hadn't paid that 25% that we billed them for, I believe, two years or whenever we implemented the last rate structure. That was the $2.9 million. So that money because it's a water sewer fund at the time we bill we recognize the revenue so it showed as a revenue in our in our financial statements so we had to appropriate fund balance so we had to take from our savings account 
and appropriate that in order to write off because a write off is an expenditure. So we ha um, in the last budget amendment from like two weeks ago, on September 6th, we had to appropriate from fund balance or from the savings account in order to write that um, expenditure off. Wait a second. We just we, we went through the budget and we determined that there was no slush fund fund balance and anytime something gets changed, it gets put back, in other words, if it's excess mm -hmm. money, it goes back into the category of projects that it came from and gets reallocated to another project in that category. There is no bank account over here that says we have leftover money and we put it in that. Well, so there is, so we do have a cash bank account and then at the end of the fiscal year, there's a CAFR that's done, a comprehensive annual financial report. And at that point, which it was submitted to the commission in July this year, mm -hmm. they look at um, revenues versus expense versus the 90 days we have to hold aside. Okay. And there was a little, at the, just enough for that, really. And that takes us like a little bit below the minimum, but we're projecting a little savings this year. But yeah, that, that in doing that, we're not able to do something else with that money. So what? Oakland Park didn't pay their bill for two years. That they, so I, they didn't pay the surcharge. They were disputing the surcharge. So they for didn't. two years they were disputing. Right. So why does it? I don't understand why it takes so long to get well, that resolved. It, as Alan said, it was um, a mediator and settlement agreement that they came up with. They negotiated a new agreement. And who who for negotiates it. for the city? Uh, Is this they turn case, our turn? Uh, I believe the city manager himself was directly involved with the negotiations at one point, and then it went to a mediator. I think Susan, uh, Susan Grant. Susan Grant was the, a lead person for it. So somebody found somebody looked at the contract and it said they weren't supposed to be paying a surcharge. We're lucky we got out of that. Well, the, you had the part that said they would pay it, but also there was a separate clause that said they would not pay more than, which was not. Uh, it was, yeah, conflicted, conflicted with other parts of the agreement. And that's I'd like to see the attorney who signed that contract for us. Yes. Okay, so. but it is. It's water under the bridge. There right. we go. Yeah, so, um, so Central Region happens to be a different fund than what we were just talking about. That was the water sewer fund. This is Central Region, which is wastewater piece, but um, it's a function. They're each functions of each other. Um, and there was just one service level enhancement, which was a comprehensive reevaluation of of the public works folks would be able to. We know this that is something that we're doing in 22. Okay. You're, you're aware of this? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so public works stormwater fund. Yeah. This is a fund that, as you know, we worked hard to build the rate structure in order to leverage the debt. Um, the debt hasn't been issued yet, but um, we have increased staffing over the past five years from 37 to 42. And there's been some new initiatives funded, including a uh, algal bloom mitigation project in 22 and a waterway quality improvement, which is, um, what do you, the something keepers, water keepers, water Miami, keep, water keep, Miami, Miami water keepers. Miami water keepers. Yeah, so that's, that's their money? That's what that, that initiative was. In 23, there were some new um, initiatives funded, including a new supervisor to help to administer the program in the amount of 149,000 maintenance activities for Melrose. Um, I guess there's new infrastructure that was put in place and now we need to maintain it to the tune of 280,000 a year. River Oak Stormwater Preserve is beautiful if you haven't been there, um, but there's some maintenance associated with those um, assets as well. And to the tune of 112,000 in annual funding for stormwater infrastructure was enhanced. Can I ask a question about the stormwater and uh, water, quality, water quality and algae bloom? There's this, there's this ongoing issue on the Numi and, and Numi Isles where people have been complaining that the water in the canals is stinky, really stinky, really hot. You can't, you can't go out in your backyard and sit in your backyard because it smells so bad. And um, Trish Halliday, Trish Halliday has been talking about she, I think she called you. But anyhow, the question was whether or not there was a broken sewer pipe under the canal that was leaking. I've heard this from people in Tarpon River. I've heard it from people in Coley Hammock. There's this myth out there. Hopefully it's a myth that there's secretly some broken sewer pipes under the canals and they're leaking, you know, bad things into the water. And that's what's making the water smell bad. 
you heard anything about this? Is there any truth to this? Every every time we've gotten, and I just saw another one last week at Harbor Inlet. Okay. It was believed that it was either a broken pipe or a issue with the, the plant. <clears throat> and we, we go out and we investigate and inspect them all the time. And we do not find any broken pipes any place. We don't see anything in the SCADA system. But we, what we do find is uh, decomposing seaweed or algae that's built up on the side of the canals that is causing the, the odors and the smells. And you get that particularly where you have a lot of tidal uh, swings up and down that, you know, as, as it dries out, it does start creating those odors. And, okay. Dr. Nancy Gessel was just texting me and saying this, the same thing. You know, we, we have investigated the, many of these type of complaints and we have never gotten, it, it hasn't been a sewage pipe break. And, you, and you, fig, you figure that out by checking the scanner data, the You, you can data. tell also, because when you have a pipe break, uh, typically you'll see a difference in the pressures in the pipes, you know, because it's going out. But the inspectors go out and if, if you have a pipe break, you'll see it very quickly. You know, yeah. used to have a lot of outfalls that were going into the canals, but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure that the uh, city pretty much uh, got a whole, you know, a lot of restaurants really were knocking out the canals, and, but I'm sure the city has taken appropriate action in the past to correct that. Y yes, uh, businesses are not allowed to connect into our stormwater system, mm -hmm. and we are responsible for the quality of the water that is discharged through it. Now, I, I can't guarantee you 100% because some of these pipes have been in the ground for 50, 60 years. They were built at a different time, and people did things that they necessarily shouldn't have. But if we do detect any of them, they're immediately told to cut it off. And I haven't heard of any complaints where we found any of those in, in years now. But, it, you know, it's, it's very important to maintain water quality standards that the only thing that goes into the pipe is rainwater, and the only thing that goes out of the pipe is rainwater. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And the other ones are a little uneventful. The project management fund hasn't really increased or decreased. This is funded through um, charges back to capital projects based upon where they work. Vehicle rental fund. Um, this is our fleet fund. It's an internal service fund that is managed by Public Works. Um, essentially, what um, they do is they charge back to police based upon you know, the number of cars police has, um, but they're the centralized group that um, they'll, they'll order for cars, they'll update cars, they'll plan for replacement of the vehicles, and we put money aside every year to plan for the replacement of vehicles when it's time. Um, the only initiatives to speak of in the last three years is the purchase of Harley David police vehicles, um, that was a lease, and they determined it was a better approach to move to purchasing them ourselves. Um, and large vehicle detailing wash service, um, this is a contractor that brings all of their own gear and um, deals with very large vehicles that need to be washed. So we spend $402,000 every year on, on police vehicles, uh, on motorcycles? It's that's a one-time nice purchase. purchase. That's, that's so this, it's not going to be ongoing. So the first year cost is higher to purchase it, and then there'll be it's a lesser amount subsequently for uh, maintaining and replacing that one. Okay, it's just, so it's not, not that number this, ongoing. Yeah, we put ongoing there because there will be additional appropriations for this initiative. Is and, that? Uh, and I hold their value. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yes. Peter, wait. I hold their value. Oh, yeah. Um, is it typical for public works department to maintain vehicles for the entire city? Is that what we're doing here with this? Yeah, yes, and Public Works is got a lot of different functions. In some cities, instead of calling it Public Works, I might call it Public Services, where you have a fleet function, you have an environmental function, things that you won't consider as a natural function within Public Works from the water and sewer, stormwater, but it does fit very well, particularly in this case, where uh, there's a lot, when you're dealing with the maintenance of the vehicles, there's a lot of environmental and regulatory concerns as well. So our uh, this falls under Dr. Nancy Gassman, and they make sure that it's being done in a uh, in the appropriate way from a regulatory aspect. As okay. Well. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I just always assumed like the police department took care of their own things. No. Yeah, it's centralized, which allows us to have better control over better uh, control of costs. Just by magnitude. 
Okay, we, we purchase hundreds of vehicles every year and we maintain, I think, more than 4,000 vehicles within the city. Do you purchase Bentleys? No. I know there's a couple Bentleys out there. No. Those are not fleet. They're not part of our fleet. Okay. Yes. Um, but so part of that 402 is the fleet replacement charge. I believe it's every three years we replace motorcycles. So we have to save up enough money so when it's time to replace the vehicle that we have that. And we do that as a charge to the police department. And then we set aside the money in our fleet fund. Don't you uh, include all the ATVs that are legally and uh, can sell them at a uh, no? no. Um, we have our own ATVs. That would be what is part of the fleet fund. So we have some on the beach and some, I believe, in police. Okay. So okay. Um, so then CIP is like a, an, its own animal. So what I just went over with you was the operating. I thought it may help you. Um, so tonight when they approve the CIP, um, I don't know if you all want a copy. Yes. This, if you could pass it around. Um, so our CIP is a five-year plan. Um, we include in the CIP, um, and maybe I'll just kind of go over it and have you kind of, <laughs> am I doing something wrong? No, I was just zooming in a little uh, bit. You. Um, so, the first column you'll see on the schedule is onset balance, and if you look all the way to the bottom on page 11, it, um, right now we have approved and unspent in projects $549 million, right? So, and of that, there's an available balance of $425 million. So, that, those are the two columns on that last page. So, that kind of shows you where we're starting as of June. So we still have a lot of projects that have been approved and appropriated, and based on our city charter, those roll from year to year. So that's the first two columns of the CIP. That third column, which is fiscal year 23, that tells you the new money that we're actually appropriating in the new year. Um, and that's $514 million. Can we stop there for sure? Mm -hmm. So we, we have on the books $540 million worth of work. Right. That's that been, been approved, approved. And, and the money has been approved, uh, uh, set aside. Um, so except for when it is contingent on, let me see how, where, how we reflect stormwater. So there's some tricky ones right now because for stormwater, as you know, we have that $200 million bond issuance, um, but we haven't issued it yet. So. It doesn't show it in the balance. Okay, so the, only the first 70 million. So for the stormwater, you know, we're planning to do $200 million. We haven't issued the debt yet. So we've only gotten a line of credit for 70 million. So in stormwater, which is on page 10, you're gonna see the balance on that 473 is 66 million. So that's the first part of the stormwater projects we're doing, where we issued a short-term bank loan for 70 million I to start that. some. Yeah. yeah, so, so that has been, secured through bank financing, and then we'll be issuing permanent debt at the end. But yeah, all of those are projects that have been um, that have been approved by the commission and they're underway. And we are supposed to be doing these projects, Correct. regardless mm -hmm. of where the money comes from. Yeah, well, but a variety but, but, of different funds, and, right. and the schedule is divided by funds. Got it, but, yep. the, but, but in reality, Enterprise. we've only used, we only have, the difference between the, the first column and the second column is what we've actually done. What will we've actually um, have in encumbrances. So there's, of that 549 that's unspent in the projects, mm -hmm. um, 425 still available to be encumbered on new contracts or spent. Okay, but then yeah. now we're gonna add another 514. Correct. So, so that's like a billion dollars. Yes. Mm -hmm. So a large part is we're planning to issue the new tranche of 200 million for water sewer mm -hmm. to start that new tranche of 200 million and then water sewer the remaining $130 million. And then for parks and rec, we have approved parks bond of 200 million, voters approved 200 million, we've only issued 80, and we're planning to issue another tranche next year. Uh, do you have the number here? 60 million. Say another 60 million next year. So the big parts of that are 60 million in the parks bond projects, 200 million for new water sewer debt to do that new tranche of money that we've been talking about. And then the third thing is the um, difference between the 70 million that we've issued in a bank loan and the one and the 200, which is 130 million. Okay. So the, those are kind of like the key numbers. Um, that made that number so high. In right. Because that 20, number that number looked incredibly incredible. It, yeah, and it's very high because of those three. Um, three things. We're, so. we're we're okay. 
Everybody follow that? Yes, can okay. I ask a question? Question, yes, go right ahead. Um, 27 million and something out of the general fund for capital projects, is yep. that right, Laura? Correct. And what's the total amount of general funds? Around 400 million. I know where you're going with that one. Yeah, that's what I was going to so the, the predecessor to this committee recommended, they made a number of recommendations to the commission, all of which they acted upon, except one, arguably, that said that they recommended that 7 to 10 percent of the city's general fund be spent on capital projects that weren't elsewhere funded. Mm -hmm. So 27 million versus... So around 400 million. So it's probably around seven. Just, <laughs> under, just under seven, I yeah. think. 20, 20 million would be 5%. 30 million would be um, yeah. uh, maybe 15%. No, that's wrong. Seven and a half percent. So just under seven percent. So we're getting there, I guess, yeah. with 27 million, which is good. Mm -hmm. So um, this is kind of like at a high level summary and I probably should have, instead of like looking on the schedule, looked here. Thank you, Keith, for putting this together for us uh, and Michael. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of a summary of the by fund where we're appropriating funds in 2023. We won't be able to appropriate the funds for the um, any of the debt issuances until the time we secure the debt. So we show it as planned in the CIP, but it's not appropriated as of October. First. Could you go back to that last slide? Absolutely. Now, I just, I just want to ask about the parks bond. So, it was a two hundred million dollar bond. Mm -hmm. Eighty was spent in this twenty. Eighty was appropriate. Appropriate, right? So we issued debt for the in first twenty twenty two. So eighty has already been time. appropriated. Right. And now sixty will be yep. appropriated for the twenty mm -hmm. next year. Right. So that's a hundred and forty million mm -hmm. of the two hundred. So then what happens? Are they just? So, so you can't do everything at once. As you see, we carry balances from year to year. So we don't really want to issue debt and pay interest um, and have everyone pay for it until the time we can actually do the projects. So we get voter approval for the maximum amount. And then as we're ready to do projects, we'll um, take go to the bank and take out the loans in order to issue the debt. Okay. So Perfect. All right. I understand. Yep. Thank you. So for the police headquarters, it was a little different because we're going to need all the money at once, and he'll talk to you about that, where we issued the full $100 million, um, up front to do the project. Okay. Okay. Um, so these are just some highlights of um, summary. This is probably what you hear about in the 7.5%. Um, we kind of lumped together um, gas tax because we have a lot of flexibility with what projects we can use for that. Um, community development block, block grant funds and the general fund CIP. So we kind of lump those all together. And all together, those more general funding sources are $27.7 million. And um, we're spending 4.1 million of that on Fire Station 13. So the costs went up for that. So um, we're funding that in the current CIP. Restoration and replacement of side or sea walls, 3.6. 3.6 million for bridge repairs and replacements. Um, 3.5 million for roadways and sidewalks. That's higher than what we've really ever been able to do. So we're happy about that. Fire station 88 is um, the new EMS station. Um, we purchased the land at this point. We needed $3.1 million in additional funds to, um, to do the construction. We had 3.1 million for uh, Las Olas. You guys have heard a lot about that mobility plan and we're doing the first phase of that with the fiscal year budget. Uh, Galt Ocean Mile beautification project, um, the city is appropriating 2.5 million. There's an anticipated um, state appropriation that's going to match that, a grant. So the total project will be $5 million. Where's, where's the police? Um, are you talking about where is it in here? Yes. So there are, there's no appropriation for the police headquarters in the proposed CIP. Um, that was the 100 million in voter approved debt was issued. And that was in the budget and the CIP. And um, at this point, that's we don't have additional general funds that um, have been set aside for that. So you're, you're telling me in so many words that it's a, it's a ceiling on that cost. Well, that's how the bond was set up, where the voters approve a maximum amount that you can issue, and that amount was $100 million. Um, So anything above that would need some additional action. Just like yeah. the, the bonds for the fire station. We didn't have that money, so 
where, where it shows up. So yeah, down the road, that's how. That so um, I mean, I don't want to read each one to you, but this kind no, of gives you a fine. highlight of um, what's in the general capital. Yes, Peter. So the, like the second and third bullets there, mm -hmm. they definitely uh, grant funding opportunities for those. And if you've got the grant funding, then it frees that yes. question. It frees that money up for other capital projects. Would that be great? Correct. Um, so. Uh, Public Works has actually uh, applied for a few of the bridge yeah. replacements. Right. If we get it, then um, it'll free up that funding and allow us to either do more bridges. I think that's what they're planning to do is additional bridges, um, kind of move some other bridges up in the schedule. Basically, the, the way the bridge grant application, uh, you have to have a 20% match. So we had uh, 3.6 million here. So that's how we decided how much we could apply for. Makes sense. What is what, what, what a $600,000 $600, renovation of Parker Playhouse? It's already been renovated. Right. Yeah, so the city has an agreement with Parker. Um, so the city owns the facility. And right. so we agreed to put a give them a certain amount each year um, to, to help with the renovation. So they've done the renovation and we're probably part of their debt financing plan. But we... Um, um, I, I think it's Broward. It. We own it, but we lease it to... So the, it's a third party. A third that party is the, whoever owns the Broward Center too. I think. Okay. They're both of those. So this is the city's partnership to enhance the facility, which okay. we own, but they have um, full control of. Okay, but this is it. This is another six hundred thousand. We're done. Um, I no, I think we have another five years or six years. At least three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have some. We have so our agreement outline. I can I can give you it for sure. No, but we so have an agreement that outlines. I think it goes through twenty twenty seven. Twenty twenty seven. Okay. I was under the impression that that renovation was done with private donations. I guess not. No, well, not solely with private donations. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Peter. And the half a million for street lights, I was also under the impression that was FPL that paid for street lights. No. No, we, we pay the electric bill as well. Oh, that's yeah. for the, well, that's not the electric bill. No, no, that's for that's the, the stuff. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. for the lights. Yeah, for new lights. New, light, new lights or old lights or replaced lights? It's not to pay electric, is it? No, this is all capital. So our, our criteria for capital is it has to have a useful life of 10 years and it's 50000 or more in expense. So otherwise it would end up in the operating budget that I just told you about. Um, I can pull the application for you. I'm sorry. I, no, I'm trying to blank out the specific okay. enhancements. But it's new It's new traffic lights for it's, places oh. that have no traffic lights. No, no, it's new street lights. Street li I'm sorry, it. street lights. Yeah, street, it's street lights, but I, I can give you the scope. They, they outline it. So if you look at the, our community investment plan, which is posted online, we no. have an application for each page that will tell you specifically what that No, I'm all in favor funds. of more lights, but I always got the right. impression it was left to FPL. No. Well, there's a we need FPL to succeed. I think that's probably what you hear a lot of times is um, getting um, their partnership is really important to move a project forward. Okay. So, it's, um, yes, um, Roosevelt. Before we move on, I just want to make sure that when we were talking about uh, bond money replacing uh, other monies that we have allocated, oh, grant money. Um, whether it's grant, uh, uh, whatever the money happened to be, if you take it out of the program, we ought to be notified where it goes. Oh yeah, we have to take it to the commission. So yeah. it's actually required. Um, it, it, help, it, it helps us it. track the money. Right. Yeah. So we have to um, buy charter if if a amount is put into a capital project and we're moving it out, um, we have to go to the commission to make that change. And if we're not doing the same program, it's considered abandoning the project. So we have to say that we're abandoning the project in order to do so. That's why there shouldn't be any slush funds. Because every fund, remember this discussion? There should be no we slush going, funds anyway. Going back five years I know. <laughs> Okay, shall we, okay. Shall we yeah. proceed? Sure, and that's kind of it. So oh, I went through fund by fund, but y'all can look at the CIP. Um, can I, I get didn't a know copy how much. That? Does it um, yeah, I think it was in the materials. Is it sent to them? Is it on the backup? Yeah. If, if not, we can send it for sure. sure. We, we shared that. So okay. it's, we just highlighted, you know, what's funded. Um, I guess the important thing to know is the funding source. So we have to have. Um, a funding source or a rate structure to support the operating budget and the capital program. So, um, you know, either we're cutting expenses or raising the rate when 
you need to do something more. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the basics. Okay. Very good. So you're welcome. Thank you good. so much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Yeah, wish us luck. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I don't think you have any problem tonight. All right. Now the, uh, the main event. Update on the police station. Yes. Do you, want, do you have a slide? No. Oh, okay. No. Uh, wanted to introduce myself. I'm Lieutenant Adam Solomon from the PD, as you can tell by the outfit. But I wanted to. I see a lot of familiar faces, which is always nice, and I appreciate the support from the board. And I know we've had it all along. Wanted to just give a brief overview and update of where we've gone and where we're at right now, and uh, some of the look aheads. So, so far, the positive is the design has been, after several value engineering exercises to try to get costing within, uh, we finalized the design. So to give people an update of what the design looks like, it's a three-story building. The PD headquarters itself is about 185,000 square feet, with the community center being slightly over 5,000. Uh, we have the parking garage of three stories, and it came out to about 360 parking spots. So right now, just to give an idea of like our project team, so we had AECOM as our design group. So they were our architects on board from the beginning. Uh, our structural engineer was Thorne Tomasetti. Uh, we have uh, the MEP engineers are AECOM and Hammond and Associates. Our civil engineers are Keith. Our landscape architects are Keith. Um, we have a, a public engagement group, which is Adams Consulting Group. So they've been with us. The positive is they're gonna be with us throughout the duration of the project. Our construction manager during the pre-construction process was uh, Moss uh, and Associates was who was selected and we were able to select a furniture vendor, J.C. White. So where we're at right now is we got done the design, we went through several iterations to try to get it within cost. Thus far we've been pretty unsuccessful. So every time we redesign or do whatever, we can't catch up with inflation. So right now we have the final cost of the GMP that came in, so that's our guaranteed maximum price. Uh, they came in high, so we're working through that now because we literally got them at the very end of last month, early this month. So we're working through that. Um, during We also have the GMP, so the final construction agreement. We handed that over to our legal team so they could start reviewing because there's a lot of language involved in that. So we wanted to get them involved early. Uh, the permits are completely, we've submitted everything for the permits. We're just waiting uh, for for the formal approvals, but we've been heavily involved in the permitting process. We've gotten all the regulatory approvals that have been required. So, you know, we're just waiting on the final from the, the DRC, but everything else has been submitted. And uh, we, lit we recently got the final approvals from the commission for the items that we needed approval on with regards to like the plats, the relocating some of those things. Funding is obviously the, the biggest hurdle and biggest challenge that we have. Uh, in talking about some of the challenges that we've seen throughout the project, everybody knows the, the rising cost of material and labor, uh, supply chains and shipping issues. As I've stated, we've gone through probably three to four value engineering exercises, which is really looking at every nut and bolt and everything in the project and working to try to get it within cost. And like I said, Every time we, you know, work to do that, we're, we're, we're put a little behind, further behind the eight ball. And then obviously we're, you know, a mission critical building. So we're juggling the task of having to maintain, you know, operating in the PD while also, uh, you know, looking at the project and doing construction. So we have a lot of logistics that we're dealing with as you, as we got um, approval to utilize the bark site, you know, to, to help with the overflow of parking. Uh, that's, you know, because we want to take, be as good neighbors as we can with Silver Ben and everybody else, because I know it's going to be, you know, tough during that time when we finally do get to, to construction. Um, we've had to work through, you know, the acquisition of that adjacent property. So that was right on the, the eastern part of the parcel. So we finally did that. But during the pandemic, it didn't help because there was conversation of, hey, we might go another legal route and things got delayed. And then we finally were able to come to an agreement. So there's, you know, we've gotten through a lot of hurdles, but now the biggest one right now is, is the financial. So we're, we're still chugging ahead and uh, trying to work with Moss and try to get to a number that the, the city can, you know, work with. So Roosevelt. A uh, couple of things. One, when you talk about the community room, by the way, I worked with this gentleman years ago mm -hmm. <laughs> when we 
Uh, so what happens when you don't say no? You wind up on all the committees, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we, we talk about the community room, um, are we talking about a room that I could come over and say, I'd like to hold an event here that I'd be able to do so? Yeah, there's, there's certain constraints. Uh, sim like we're, we have to change some language, I know, with regards to how things can be used, similar to like <coughs> how parks, they have different events and you can use it X amount of times. So there is some language that we have to work through, but it is something that that's the purpose of it, for you guys to have HOA meetings and things like that, but we still got to work out the, the language. Good. Okay. Wait, wait, one, one more. And the other one is you, you, you're talking about um, I don't want to call it a cost overrun yet, but um, the different and the original allocation for total cost versus the actual bid cost now. Uh, what are we talking about? I would say, look at being honest, we came out about $42 million over altogether for our cost and soft cost. Wow. Yeah. $42 million. Wow. Yeah. But that includes, like I said, that includes a hard cost, which is the, the, the price to do the construction, and soft cost includes everything else that goes into it, including, you know, the permitting, yeah, includes the, the building acquisition that we had to pick up. Um, there's a, I mean, we took over a lot of things as well, like insurance, like builder's risk insurance is well over a million dollars. So there's a lot of things as you add it up. I think our soft cost wound up being over $23 million, and the construction wound up, through Moss's numbers, wound up being uh, 119 Yeah, no, I, I understand that, yeah. And Good to meet you in person. We spoke over the phone. Yeah, we've talked a couple times. And I guess the tentative um, groundbreaking is around uh, November or December. Is that still the target? Yeah. You mean the the targeted dates? Like you said, the big thing is we got to get the construction agreement squared away. But they're still looking at a ceremonial groundbreaking by the end of the year. You know, as everybody knows, I'm learning. Once you hit it, you mean do a ceremonial groundbreaking, there's still a lot that needs to be done before you're actually working on the site, you know, so uh, um, like the shop drawings and items like that. So there's a lot that we still got to work through. We've already started on the site relocating some of the utilities because we have to maintain two buildings at the same time. So we've been working with, you know, Crown Castle, AT&T, so some of that stuff's already been taking place. Get rid of those little uh, shallow wells that uh, I designed for uh, EQCB uh, back, uh, I don't want to say that, I don't realize how old I am. Um, the other thing is I'm concerned, and as we spoke about the, the health, the precautions, um, what is being done for those folks that are in the existing structure now to, I mean, I, when I made my walkthrough back in, Whenever back in 2019, um, if I'd have been an inspector, I'd have condemned that building because it was so bad. It has so many things wrong with it: differential settlement, mold, of course, uh, groundwater infiltration. But um, I, I don't think there's enough that they could be done to keep your folks in there healthy. Look, it's a challenge. It's always been a challenge. I know in the upcoming fiscal year, we are going to start to look at things to, to look at how long are we realistically going to be in here and have to start to look at, you know, things that we can improve, you know, for the air quality of the, the employees and things like that. So I know that, you know, I mean, uh, Chief Lynn is pretty dedicated to, to making sure we're doing what we can to keep this building safe. Well, God bless you. And thank you to all those folks and your service that you do for, for us. Peter? Is it a design build contract and who is the contractor? Right now, no, we did a, a CM at risk project. So what we did is we brought AECOM and we, you know, we, so we were involved in the design itself. We brought in Moss early on. We selected them through a request for qualifications. And what the reason you bring them in early on is so they have a say so on materials and costing and things like that to try to help with the project to get it within cost. And uh, so right now we're under a pre-construction contract with them, not the construction contract. Ultimately, that's the goal, but uh, that's where we're at. So in all likelihood, it'll be Moss building it, correct? Yeah, you mean Moss has been our partner, you know, since, you mean during for, I would say, 60% of the design process. So they've been on for a while, and uh, 
so be, be, uh, um, James, and then I have a question. Yeah, um, I just want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. So there was a $100 million bond, and now you've gone through all these processes to try to stay within cost, yes. and you're $42 million over. Yes. So was the $100 million even reasonable? No. It was. It's hard for me to say, you know, being a police officer, that I'm, okay. I'm so even able to speak. Somebody else tell me. No. It's no. a political no. number. It was a okay. political number. It, it, it was. It was political. Okay. Right. Like the $200 million for the parks bond was a political number. They okay. Just That's what I need. The... All right. All right. Okay. Uh, did you, when you um, did this project, was it via an RFP or did you just shepherd the project through in individual pieces? No, we did everything through procurement, but we opted to do it as a request for qualifications instead of going to the low so bid. It wasn't even an RFP done here. They, you just, the police department managed this project, essentially. Well, with with procurement, and I, you mean, some of us were on the selection committees, but it was driven by committees that were throughout the whole agency, not just police department. So we had somebody allocated from. So the city managed to build uh, managed is managing to build this project without sending it to a third party P3. We're taking care of it. It's taking time, but we're doing it. Yeah, we're, we don't have it out. To, um, maybe I'm misunderstanding the question. Alan understands what I'm saying here. There was no P3 involved here. No, this was no, no, no private no. public partnership. No private, no. This was done through the normal city processes of building a city building. Yes, the year. Well, except yeah. to say it's construction management risk which is slightly unusual where you put out a very preliminary design and you bring on a likely contractor an early stage right. that can participate in the design right. but most people when they say oh the city can't possibly do these things because it's too big it's too complex i think that was true many years ago but i think we've gotten better at this because We've all realized that, you know, you can't put Joe in a room and, and he's going to run the project. you got to bring in a team. you got to bring expertise. you got to get a whole team together and work together. But the city can do these things. We have the, the ability to do it. And it's water under the bridge right now, but I just felt compelled to say that. Moving along. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, I have just one more. So um, I know that there's always a sequencing associated with the build and you you think the plan was to build the parking lot first or something like that and then move on. What about in order to save some costs, not, not, and I'm not saying that it's not needed, but like the community center itself, postpone construction of that till the very end and maybe save some money. Or Here's what I've learned is there's a lot of duct work, a lot of electrical, a lot of all those components that go into, that's connected to our building, to the community center. And then you got to redesign and do all that, and you're going to just set the project back. What I've heard at one point, let's say, for instance, if the community center was at one point two and a half million, and then, of course, it goes up over time. But if you remove it, you're not going to get the value if you try to put it back one later. It's it's It just becomes too costly, and you're going to have to pay we're gonna to have to pay as a city for a redesign just for all the electrical and all those components. So, yeah, so, yeah it's. So I guess on, under the value engineering, we're not gonna get a LEED certified building here, are we? The, what we're doing is we, a determination was made early on. I wouldn't say we're not, we are keeping a LEED scorecard mm -hmm. uh, because what I've learned is uh, that was a determination made by the city manager at that time, but it, it's the right determination. I think that when you look at the scorecard, you'll see that we would have fit right in there to, to, to do what we had to do to meet that certification. Oh, you will you will get a lead certification. No, we're going to keep a lead scorecard. There's a, a cost associated if you want it to be a lead building. So I can't speak in definitives because, once again, I'm a guy in police uniform, but I've heard it could be like 10, 15% more on a project just to maintain that, to get that certification. When if you kept the lead scorecard, you're showing, hey, I would have passed the test anyway. So I don't know how that works. That will make us be about 60 million, you know. Yeah, no, we don't want to do that. And we're not going to get, um, 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 what do you call it, electric uh, solar panels on the roof or anything yeah, like that. There was some chatter about some of that. We have, I mean, I can't speak too in detail, but I know we've had to answer questions to the public with regards to, like, our sustainability and measures yeah, that right. we've taken. But, yeah, we've been very cognizant on, on that. Um, 
but we're not doing uh, solar as of now. But we have some like for EV vehicles and things like that associated in the garage. How many birds in that area? Yeah, Roosevelt. <laughs> the um, and and the building and we, we talked about parking garages. What about the maintenance portion? It's going to be on site or off site? Your, oh, the fleet and everything yes. right now, it's the plan is to maintain it all on, on, on site. It's not part of our project whatsoever. That's been part of the thing we've had to, that's been part of the challenge to work around that. Uh, so right now it's, it's still on site and any, any plans that are happening are outside of me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have more questions? Okay. All right. This is good. Everybody's good. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Well, but not excellent. Where are we going to find $42 million? <laughs> <laughs> really, Alan, where are we going to find another $42 million? Uh, so you had this discussion point that's going on right now. But I don't know. I Thank mean, you, well, you can't let this. Thank, Thank you, sir. You can't let that contract. We'll get, we'll get the building. Is it chair? Yes. Um, I was going to share that at the next conference meeting, they're going to be discussing that and the potential ways to pay for it. Okay, well, so, give us a preview. What are the potential um, ways? So Susan Grant is actually in oh. charge of that. I haven't heard it yet either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a financing mechanism of some sort. Like like borrow it or borrow bond it? it. We, borrow well, we can't bond anymore. We finished with that yeah, bond. Yeah, right. It wouldn't be voter approved debt. It would be okay. a way of securing funds and making an annual payment from what I understand. So then we budget each year. Um, can you give them my contact info? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And the next item on the agenda is the Santec presentation, fiscal year increase in water. Stop using all that water in the fountain and then we'll, and we'll save some money. That's part of the cooling mechanism no, for some building or something. Mm -hmm. Plus, that's recycled water. Yeah. Yes, he's working on it. Chris is going to do it. This presentation preceded any decision or discussion on the P3 for the water department, right? Uh, I'm not sure which presentation this one here is. Sorry, I'm just looking at the wrong year. This would have been. Uh, Chris is shaking his head like this isn't working. We are engineers. We don't. <laughs> we not IT guys. Not IT guys. I realize there are limitations here. Oh, we bring it on the IT guy. Gotta wear a sweater. 
supposed to be a medium here. Okay, maybe we can just talk about water rates for a moment. Now, we all know water, water rates are going up. No matter who. Oh, okay. We, we all, no matter who builds this water treatment plant, water rates are going up. Even if we didn't have to build a new water treatment plant, water rates are going up. And I, I, I was under the impression that we were looking at a 5% increase every year for the next five years. Uh, it's, uh, but now I the spoke, numbers. I spoke to the uh, finance. And she said it's going to be a 7.6% increase for the water increase this year, as opposed to what, um, um, what the hell is that? Uh, there's two names that did that before. Santec? Uh, no. Um, oh, yeah? Santec. Oh, yeah. 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 No, it was uh, that report that had um, the first uh, fiscal year 2023 is going to be 25% increase. It's uh, Fisher, not Fisher. Oh, Ernst and Young? Yeah. And they, so that didn't apply. That was their analysis right. of the four proposals that had been the P3 proposals. Was their analysis and their numbers? This is what the, what they were supposedly going to be approved, and I thought, and I heard it was like approved. And sometime I had asked uh, back here in February, I think it was, and they said it's yeah, it's going to be approved. It was approved, um, like for twenty five percent. Thirty percent was fifty percent. Thirty percent was twenty five percent, and then for three point six percent, there was a scale. Yeah, of increases. Of the I think that was illustrative. Correct. I, well, think that was a, but I think I can give a little on that. What, what we had is they did an analysis of the proposal that from each of the four, and they tried to do an apples to apples comparison of it. Mm -hmm. But those proposals were based on, uh, they were unsolicited. So they did not have the city's input as far as what was going, and it was at a certain level of understanding. So they approved it, and then they said to start negotiating towards a comprehensive agreement, which is what we've been working on for six months. During that time, pricing has changed. They submitted it, about, I think, about a year before we finally had a decision on it. So the pricing and everything has changed. Uh, the city has gotten involved looking at the economic model on it, which changed a lot of the, the numbers that were in there. So what you're, you see now, the presentation they did last week, it's got a different financial analysis that goes along th than what we had back in February, March. Mm -hmm. A little heart palpitations right. with that so, uh, yes. uh, doubling in five years. I propose that what you just said, the uh, proposal as it was uh, put on the table for the P3, they were going to finance maybe 100% yes. of the project. Turns mm -hmm. out that we're now financing, and, and we don't know the details because all we know is that document that you see, the, the PowerPoint. We're financing 75% of it, and they're only financing 25% because we could do it cheaper. That puts that money on our balance sheet? It would be uh, a bonded, I'm, I'm sure, yes. We would have to go out So now on top of the $200 million that we first did, we're going to do another $200 million. Now we're going to put 75% of the water treatment on our balance sheet, so to speak. We're paying off, still paying off water months. I mean, how much can that balance sheet take in terms of the rates? That's what drives the rates. Yes. How much money you put on that balance sheet? Y yes. You know, and what, as we were looking through what would be the impacts of it, it was uh, there were several meetings with Stantec mm -hmm. and uh, Laura Reese and the bunch of folks about how much money would be needed, and now they're trying to figure exactly when it would be needed to see when uh, we would have to have certain amounts in the water model as far as rate increases. So I, th I think that is it's a very appropriate question to be asking. Mm -hmm. Yes, Peter. So now we're starting to talk about the P3 proposals, which we discussed at the outset. So maybe procedurally we should jump ahead to general discussion 
and have you, the chair, mm -hmm. bring that into play. And then if and when they get this um, presentation right. up and running, we'll go back. To if there's no objection, perhaps we can do that so that we can save some time. <coughs> okay? All right. The document. You have that document. All right. It, it projects that having, if we do this, when we do this project, because it's not an if, when we do this project, um, it will impact the water rates by a certain percentage. Okay? And that's the percentage it would have to increase in order to fund the project, assuming that we end up with not another you know, $100,000 of inflation, et cetera, et cetera. So I have, I have a question. Oh, I have several questions. That amount of increase only relates to the, does it only relate to the funding of the plant? In other words, that is not the totality of the rate increase. That is the amount of rate increase that is attributable to the building of the new plant. All the other increases that we were planning on, the, the new $200 million, the ongoing, you know, increase in the, you know, cost of running the, the facilities and et cetera, et cetera. So is that additive? Yeah, uh, so this includes, and what they showed on the slide was a 139% increase over the next 10 years. That is based on the model, which has in it the $200 million bond that we're planning on doing, has in it a certain increase uh, that we expect to uh, occur every year. Just, you know, we normally increase two, three, four percent every, every year, year anyway. And so they, they assume a increased rate every year. Mm -hmm. They assume that the $200 million bond would be in there. Plus they assumed whatever debt payments we already had for uh, other requirements in there. So it, it, the That's totality is 139%, but that is only on the water portion. From you, the wastewater portion is, is not included in here. And the, that is uh, a slightly different rate that comes together in a water and sewer bill. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that, okay, that number so is I think, more money. You know, I, that's news to me, because okay. in my mind, your, your bill is going up, and it's like, this is going to be the rate increase. I see what my bill is, and I say, okay, that's going to go up 10% or 15%. But now you, we're here, I'm hearing at least, now the water is going to go up this amount, and the sewer is going to go up this amount. But not What's the, the combination rate increase? Yeah. That's what I want to know. That's what I think the people want to know. Yeah. What's it going to cost? I think what they did is they separated out the water and the wastewater to, to show what the impact of this plant is over the next 10 years. But they can, and, and I wish we had Laura here, and, and uh, they can go into the Stantec model, and they can tell you what it is for the combined bill. Because you, you don't get a separate water and wastewater. You just get one separate right, bill. Right, right. And that's what people look at, and that's what they react to. Yeah. But, but that is not 139% on the wastewater side. I, I believe it's something less than that. But it makes the 139% higher. Yes. Well, we need to know. Uh, typically, we're at, we're at where Ralph was worried we're going yeah. to get to. Yeah, typically, <laughs> the, the wastewater is predicated on your domestic water use. And so there's a different a rate that applies for the wastewater. It's volume, volume related. Right. I understand that. But yeah. there's also a rate increase that's going to be associated right. with taking care of the Right. Wastewater. Because we have to bond out another $200 million for sewer projects, uh, stormwater projects. That in the same project? No, that's no, different. That, that's a different That's another. That's a different that goes directly to the bill. Yes, Peter. So, Alan, where you are currently with your negotiations, have you come to an understanding of what the typical bill for somebody using 5,000 gallons, who's the supposedly the typical user, what that's going to be and when? Yeah, uh, in 10 years, the average sewer is $167, it's 139% increase. See, this, this goes to James' point because my bill, I pulled out the last one, I used fourth. 4,000 gallons. My bill is already $129, but of course it's got sanitation in there as well. So when these numbers are brought forward, it needs to relate to the way that the bill is shown. Yeah. Because 
you know, I'd happily accept that bill going from 129 to 160, but that's by no means the whole story. So when, your, your, your water bill includes your water and your sanitation, sanitation sewer-based city, sewer, single-family mm -hmm. city. So you've got to be able to pull out of that amount of money yeah. what mm -hmm. the water costs. I can't kind of can't make it that. relate to the numbers that have been... But, 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 the gallon is huge. Your, your water bill is about the same as mine. Mine was a 149 mm -hmm. this month. And, and I don't really try to determine how much of that is wastewater, how much is sewer, I pay the damn bill mm -hmm. and, and, and be done with it. And now, if it, if it get up to 180, 190, then I might get concerned and try to figure out what caused this to happen. Do I have a leak? So it's a uh, ratio of your domestic water. That's yeah, and, it, and it's not constant. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's a different rate. You know? Yeah. yeah. The, the, so. Sanitations in it too. More usage, mm -hmm. the higher the rate. I live in a condo. I never see this. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, you know, I don't know what happened to my nine dollar water bill. <laughs> and and yeah. I have irrigation. It's a separately metered. So right. that's another factor as but well. It's yeah, but it's only water. It's not sewer. sewer. Right. Right. So put a pump in. Okay. So. Uh, from what I've been able to pull here, and I don't have what today's average water and wastewater mm -hmm. is for 500 or 5,000 gallons, but they, in an earlier version of the slide, showed that it would go up to $167 for 5,000 gallons, water and wastewater combined. So I, but I, not, that doesn't include sewer, or obviously not sanitation, right? Or does it? Well, not, not wastewater this is water is and wastewater, wastewater combined was uh, projected to be $167 for a 5,000 gallon. Yeah, but wait a minute. When you look at Peter's bill here, the one that is just water, not, we can figure this out, Peter. You can take out sanitation and sewer. We just add up those three numbers, okay? So if we just add up 14, San 12, San and 2. Sanitation is 44, isn't it? Right, knock that out. Yeah. Knock out, uh, just knock out sanitation. Yeah. We'll leave the utility tax. So your water and sewer combined okay. is that so, number. So that's 85. That would be 8540 right. currently. 8540 currently. For, right. for 4,000 gallons. Right. For 4, so now, yeah. so and now you're, you've got And you're saying that's going to double then, basically, right? It's 160 yes. some. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So 167, so it's about double. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Alan, I, I guess the rate, as you use more water, there's a higher percentage rate on that right and yeah, that is why they go story. they say five thousand gallons to try and normalize it right. mm -hmm. but it yeah it's it's a tiered structure so peter using your numbers <clears throat> i just did it really rough looks like your bill would go up about sixty dollars ah in one year ten years in ten years, ten years. in ten years oh, oh ten god years. that's so not that's, that's not bad. bad that would be about a 75 percent increase on my uh over 10 years. Water wastewater element. Guys, that's I, not bad at all. We said I'm at like 85 something currently, and you're saying it'll go to how much? Can we hold you to that, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, if you give me a couple more minutes, we can hold it to a different number. Let's sign the release for Yeah, you. I want that as writing. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's not, that's not true. But that's still, not to true. be fair, wait, Alan, wait. we're talking about no, a, a number and a rate that is still currently being negotiated, correct? This is still it, under it, negotiation. We are still in negotiations, and that is what will be presented in the comprehensive agreement is uh, along with the how much we would pay them and when we would pay them, uh, what the operational cost will be, all that will be in that agreement. And if the commission thinks that it's too high, the, the cost, they don't agree with it, they don't approve it, then it, it doesn't pass. But um, right now, we, like I said, it's it's all being captured in that agreement, and we will have to present it to the commission in October. So you're giving us a look ahead as to how it appears to be. Yes. Be. What what? How how do we deal with those cities that we provide water to? Do they have any input? Um, they have an agreement with us, and there's caveats in that agreement that if they don't like how much we're charging, 
they, get your water they, they can away. terminate at based, you know, <laughs> on you know, a decision they don't want to pay. Otherwise, if they want to yeah. us to be their water provider, water. These, they will pay these rates, plus they will pay that surcharge that we were talking about earlier on, on top of that, on this base rate. One, one other thing to bring to everybody's attention is that once we get the I&I uh, &I work completed, the sewer portion should come down. Yeah, right. Nothing comes down, Ralph. Nothing comes joke? down. I'm going to start laughing on that one. Come on. No, he's okay. gagging me. <laughs> I, just, I just did some numbers for Peter. He pays $28 for water, and he pays $51 for sewer. Mm -hmm. So if you're telling me his $28 for water is going to go up by 136%? 139. 139%. So let's do the news. Somebody else besides yeah. me. So it's how much? It's $28 times... Multiplied by 136%. Yeah. Times by one. That's 38. $38. Yeah. And then the other element? Well, the other element we don't know because it's $51 now, and we don't know how much higher the sewer part portion is going to be. I can't believe that it's only going to go up. $28 to $38 in 10 years. I, I just don't. No, I, mean, I don't but see. I don't believe not 120%. it. Maybe the math is wrong. Yeah. Because um, if you take 28 and you multiply it by 100 and. Yeah, maybe we're put doing it, the math wrong. Put it this way if it's 28 and it goes up to 100%, it'd be 56. Really? We're doing the math wrong. So, so the way I just did it was I took the bill that you took the trash out of yeah. and just divided by 4000 to get cost per gallon, right? Then I put that number down. I took this uh, 167 or whatever, divided that by 5,000 to get that cost per gallon. Took the differential, multiplied it back by 4,000 to get your bill increase based on the increased differential. So it should be 48 bucks. 48 bucks. Well, that, that, well, that blows my mind too. But you, you, still have to, you still have to add the, the sewer if it goes up and you have to add the trash. But, but we're talking just the larger uh, and sewer bill based on the plant. See, we're back to the same point that James made, which is when you quote these numbers, you have to make them as all inclusive as possible as to what people are gonna see on their bottom line. Now, the chair does not pay sanitation mm -hmm. uh, being in a condo. So you can take that out because a lot of people will relate to that. But everything else I think needs to stay in there when you're talking about what people's bills are gonna go to. When a $28 bill goes up 100%, that's 48 already. And that's not with the 36. That's 56. 38 is a 100%. Doubling is 56. It's 56. Yeah. So how, how, are you, how are you getting these numbers? I, 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 I don't uh, understand but, um, it. I can just tell you. I could be a math. I need a mathematician. 30, I, uh, 23. I think these presentations you know, that have been made. I think that I'm, you know, not intentionally hiding stuff, but I just think it's not presented in a way that's clear to the general public. And I think you should take somebody's water bill, Mr. Average that does 5,000, and show it, and show each line item and explain it and talk about the percentage increases or the potential. We don't really know what the sewer's going to go up. And just... It has to be explained in a way that people understand because there's so much information, you know, 29, 30%, you know, people are freaking out you know what about it is? their water bills. It's the, $24, it's the $28 that he's paying plus the 48. Because the 48 is the 136%. You put them together. That's what the new bill is. It's the original 100. Plus, it's the original that's, that's number 76. plus 100 and 36% on top of that. It's got to yeah, be that. Yes. It's got to be that. I, I found a chart here Two that points. is based on about 139%. Right now it's saying that for water and sewer, it would be an average of around 76.35 this year, mm -hmm. which would go up to $166 in 2032, so 10 years from now. Oh, so you're going from 76 up to 166 over 10 years. So yeah, you got to add them. That's like a 150% increase, right? 
Right, it's, it's a combination of the two. And I'm just looking at one of the model runs that they did that has yeah. the one. 139 percent. Mm -hmm. Chair, can I? Yes, so, so yeah, it seems like you have this ready to go, this presentation, right? Is that correct? This, uh, this video. This is a video from the children. Yes. From the and how, how long does this video take? Um, how long does this video take? Uh, I, I didn't know we were showing the video first. Yeah, that's that's what you that's what you requested on the in the last meeting that they wanted to watch the part of the video where the presentation from Stan Tech was. Okay. Now that this presentation, when they did it, was it based on the sort of numbers that you're now at in negotiating the P3? I think it looks like you. This might be before. Yeah, that's it's probably June. sitting there. Same, same outfit. I believe it is from earlier. So, chair. Yes, sir. I'm assuming that we, the, the ITF, will get another. Get the opportunity to see this agreement before. No, we won't. don't assume that. Do not assume that. I think we have to talk about that because, Do not what, assume. you know, when are we going to see it now? When is it going to become available? I mean, this task force is supposed to be looking at things like this and providing input. When are we going to see it? I received it today. I, very first draft. I haven't even looked at it. The lawyers. The city attorney's office has not reviewed it yet. The city manager's office has not reviewed it yet. So I, I think we are probably two weeks from reviewing, making comments, and having a document that can be shared with commissioners, with the public. And, and it, it may not be ready by then based on what we see in the document. But Alan, but, who's, but who the, made this document? If you haven't seen it and you haven't participated in it, the attorney hasn't seen it. Well, we have an outside counsel who has been representing the city in helping to craft it. The, the IDE Ridgewood has been part of doing it. All that we have seen on the public work side has been a, a lot of the uh, information, that, uh, the annexes with the technical specifications that are going into it, but we have not seen the combined document. You, you have to remember there's been a number of different working groups dealing with labor relations, dealing with the financial sides. So everybody has been working in their own silos on what the technical terms are, but this is the first time that it's been put together into a single document that we can go through. But where's Hazen and Sawyer in all this? They, they have been, we have been meeting at least two to three times a week for the past six months, going through all the technical portions of it and working off the spreadsheets and tables and things, but we have not seen it in the form of a comprehensive agreement yet. So, so that is what we are seeing now is where it was all brought together. together. So let me ask you a question then. This this little drawing that shows this facility. Yes. Hazen and Sawyer has been part of the development of this little drawing. Okay? Right. Yes. And there's one big building here and there's these tanks in the middle and there's right. another little building. So Hazen and Sawyer has opined that this is it. This will do the trick. We, the last meeting that we have, we all agreed that the, the latest laid out layout was was what we agree on and what we, you know. What you want. What, it's want. what you yeah. want, okay? It will, it will produce the kind of water that you want. Right. So that's done. So that's good. That's one thing. That's the, So we know it's bigger than a bread box. And that's going to cost, at this moment, $485 million. Yes. Hazen and Sawyer has opined, as our representative, that, you know, yeah, guys, this is going to cost you $485 million. Yes. Okay. So we got progress here. That, that's very important to me because I wanted to know who's who's watching the shop here. Who's who's? It's not the third-party vendor that's telling us we're going to build this plant. That we This is our plant. We want it. We know what it's going to cost. So really, to me, at this point, it's the legal, it's the, the labor, and it's the dollars. Okay? It all comes down to the dollars. And this whole concept of risk transfer, we, we're, the P3 is the risk transfer. What risk are we transferring to them? They didn't have to design it. They didn't have to uh, figure out the technology. All they have to do is build it. They did have to. They would have to design yeah. it. Yeah. They, design. they did design the, the plan, and we agree on the design. You know, we changed some things but um, we, that we mutually agree, but they did the design, and they picked that technology. And, well, this is good to know because I didn't know this. 
So they, they have actually designed a plan? Yes. How, what percentage are we up to in design? I think at this point they're about 50%. So there are some drawings somewhere for that little yeah. plant. There, there, is, there is 3D models that we looked at in AutoCAD and they show all the, where all the pipes go, what, everything. It's very detailed. Very, that's very good. That's very good. So again, it's just the money and the operation. So let's see the document. Then what is it going to cost us? What are we paying per gallon of water? Or are we paying a set price for a no how, how, how are we paying for the water? We don't even know. It, it is based on gallons of water. And, and I, I think really uh, a discussion with Susan Grant, who has been doing all the financial part, would be a lot more informative than anything I can okay. give you on that. Yes, Peter. But we're not going to have an opportunity, excuse me, we're not going to have an opportunity to have that discussion. Right. We're running out of time. These guys are going to vote on this on October 18th, whether they understand it or not. Right. There, are, there is another meeting of ITF between now and, now yeah. and then. Okay. Um, but then by the time we get our meeting to the time they vote on it. You're not going to have a chance. You're not going to have a chance. Change. No. Well, and honestly, how long does this, I mean, the city commission going to, Who's going to explain it to them? Do they even care? I don't think. I mean, if care. someone from Public Works goes in, or do they get a presentation by IDE or whoever? It's they're going like, to see it on October eighteenth. I'm vote really on. frustrated. It'll be an evening. I'm really frustrated. The infrastructure task force should be weighing in on this, and I feel like we're sidelined. Whether it's intentional or not, I don't know, but that's how I feel, Alan. And it's like. Come on, pull us in, or what the hell are we even doing? Point, Peter. So these are some of the questions that I feel should be answered. Whatever it course it takes, it just goes straight to the commission. The first one is the chair's question. Why are we using city funds? What's the reasoning for that? Uh, is this, will the city retain, you don't have to answer these now. Does the city retain complete control over the water rates going forward. Um, do we have, will there be a commitment to take a certain minimum amount of water? Because with that, with the costs going up, I can envision a case where water demand drops off. People can conserve a lot more when it becomes a lot more expensive. Um, if what happens if during the construction of this, the company doing it decides that it's now starting to cost too much, um, they're running over budget and they pull off the job or they stop work or something, what, what recourses will be written in to the contract? Because as I've said previously, a lot of the rationale for this for the P3 is the speed, and if they decide that it's, you know, they're giving us a fixed price and it's costing too much, and they stop work to put pressure on us, how are we going to force them to get going again? The performance bonds. There, there are performance requirements in the agreement, and if they if they default, there are penalties associated with it. Will they have a will they, will, they, will they have a bonding company as per usual? So that if they default, the city can go to the, the bondsman. They, 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 they should have a performance bond and a construction bond over there. Yeah. Okay. That should be part of the agreement. And it should be. The, the city will continue to, uh, will be city staff continuing to uh, staff it. Yes. And the city bears all the costs of that, correct? Yes. And that continues. The city will be, will be paying for the staff operating it. Uh, also, as part of the agreement, it's cheaper for us to pay directly for the electricity for the plant and to pay for the chemicals of the plant. So we will be doing both of those during its operation. Okay. And there will be criteria in there that if for some reason uh, chemical use goes above a certain threshold, uh, that if something is not working right on it, it would be, uh, you know, we, we are capped off on how much we are paying for chemicals and they would have to reimburse us for excesses over that. And I'd also like to see when they were proposing IDE, I think all of them, they had projected increases 
in costs that the city was going to be expected to bear. And I do definitely remember that IDE was what I call front-loaded. Their costs accelerated that the city had to pick up, accelerated quicker at the outset than other people's. And then after three or four years, they, they declined compared to everyone else. So that ought to be captured and how that compares with their original proposal. Yeah. And, so, and they, that was in the chart. What they had proposed originally was a 1%. It, they, they start with a three dollars and thirty cents rate and a one percent increase per year uh, it changed as with the different financial plan to now where it is a dollar 61 initial rate five percent change for the first five years and then a two and a half percent increase for the years following that so it, it the, the Financial model became more complex. over the course it's of its, and it's still a 32 and a half year. Yes. So that would apply during all those 32 and a half years. Yes. Right. Then how do we get up to 136 percent increase? I mean, if they're only going to, I mean, the numbers just don't don't seem to work out. Um, I, I, just, well, I, don't all, I mean, I just it. put on the record my questions. There's all sorts of questions and. Um, I have, yeah. I, have a, I have another question. If we're paying for the staff, okay, but right. they're operating the plant, that means the staff is working for them. How are they going to control the staff that we, it's our staff, and we pay them? And any escalation in pay and benefits, et cetera, et cetera, fall to us. What if there's work issues? What, what if there's a strike? Yeah. Um, you know, that's the problem of having a third party doing the operation or the, the management of the operation, but they're not, the, his, they're not their employees. They, they will still be city employees. They fall under our collective bargaining agreements and they, they had to agree to that. Uh, there was a, a separate group that was working on the labor relations part that HR did as far as how to manage employees, how to deal with uh, employees who aren't performing properly, you know, discipline issues, things along those lines. Mm -hmm. And so that is supposed to be part of a, a separate agreement, for the labor services agreement. But the, but there is an issue as far as um, they are operating the plant, but they're operating within the bigger Fort Lauderdale water system. So they still have to meet our regulatory requirements, and they fall under our permits. So uh, those are some of the issues that we've been trying to work through for a long time. Yes. Who is maintaining the plant? We have the employees who are operating it, and, and of course we'll have uh, some mechanics there who are doing stuff. If there's any big repairs, it falls on them to, to do it. If a, a pump goes out and has to be replaced, they bear the cost of re replacing that. And, and there's a maintenance schedule that they will have to... Um, and, and how long would they do that? 30 years. For 30 years, the entire duration of the agreement. So, okay, let's let's be serious. Let's get serious here. Alan has just gotten the document, right? Yeah. Alan's got to absorb it and, and think about it, all right? So clearly, we're not going to have any discussion on this document until our next meeting. Yeah, so James. We, so maybe Alan's. Maybe we get access in a couple of weeks, and then we have a couple of weeks to have our discussion. My concern is that the task force should be providing commentary on the document or to the city commission or to the department. Will we have the opportunity to do that or will it just going to get pushed through, you know, task force, okay, whatever, and, you know, just move on. The, the city is going to uh, listen very closely to staff recommendations. I would assume, right? Because they, they don't know what the hell is going on. Um, so they're going to trust you and whoever it is that you're working with, the attorneys and, and negotiators, to work out the best deal for the city. And one of you guys is going to say, and this is what staff recommend. Yes. And, and, and they're going to take that and, and they're going to run. They're going to say yeah or nay. To, to the the recommendation, and if they say yes, um, whatever is in the document then is going to be the 
the the the pros and cons and the working thing that they're going to use. So. Your concern is not going to be addressed. There is no time for it. Yes, Peter? So, <laughs> thanks, Roosevelt. If we <laughs> approve the motion today, asking the Commission for the opportunity to review this before it goes to them, the first theoretical opportunity that that motion could go to the Commission would be the Tuesday the 20th, that's the third Tuesday. Now, is that enough time to get that on an agenda, to report that we pass such a motion, asking the Commission to show it to us before they consider it? If, if you pass a motion tonight, it would have to go through the, um, the City Clerk's Office as a memo. Yeah. Commission. Communication. Uh, communication. Uh, the meeting is actually on the Thursday, not the Tuesday, due to, uh, if I remember right. Um, I can talk to him and see, but I, I can't guarantee you that it would do it. Typically, as soon as he receives it, and I think there's a requirement that he has the minutes to go with it, uh, they, they try to schedule at the first possible opportunity, but it, it is very tight to get a communication to them for the next meeting. How about we do, do, do something different? How about we follow up with Roosevelt and say, why don't we look at the document here? and give our comments to Alan. And when Alan goes to the October 18th meeting, your presentation, you could amend to your presentation. These were the comments we got back from the, um, the infrastructure task force. I've done that several times with a development project where we just gave the, the comments to the staff and the staff appended them to the report that they gave to the commission so the, the commission, as they're reading the documents, they said, well, you know, city planning said this, or somebody said this, should we include that? Or should we take that under consideration? So that might be the way to go. Under that. I do not know, because it will be an, an action for uh, them to decide if there will be a presentation or not, or if they'll just receive the document and uh, ask questions. That's what they usually do for uh, agreements and things at the evening meeting. So I, I, I don't know if I will be given an opportunity what to if, do this. What, what if we do something else? What if we, we make a document? The only way we can talk to the commission is through a communication, right? Yes. Shoot. Or individually, you can talk to your own commissioner. Your so, yeah, we, we, Chair, were you proposing that, that we're asking Alan to bring the document to us at our next meeting, which should be October the 3rd? Then we make our comments and we ask Alan to report on those. We're that asking. was my theory, that we ask Alan to report on our comments, but Alan does not seem to be very enthusiastic about that. I do not know. Typically when they have, they bring items to the commission, we sit on the sidelines and I must ask I see you questions. there. I wave to you. Yes. So, but we, typically for, uh, for items that they're voting on, we don't do a presentation. We just answer the question. So it's, it's not like the conference where we go up and we can we show them a presentation. We, we're more waiting for them to ask. That's, that's why I can't guarantee. But Alan, I can't but Alan they're going to be looking at a document. The document's going to land on their desk on October 17th. Trust me on this. And they're, they're going to be looking at it. Somebody has got to ask questions. Somebody's got to say, do you have any questions, commissioners? It's hard to believe that the commission would just put this on the consent agenda. It's not going to go on the consent. It's not going on the consent. It's going on a vote. It will not be a presentation unless they specifically ask it to do it. And right now, I don't believe that's going to be the way it will go. So here's what you could here's what you could do: is if we made this request of you now, it may be, you know, above your pay grade, but you could go to the manager and ask for authority, and if he felt he needed the sign-off from the commission, he can write what I used to call a Friday memo. I think they're now... What I will do is I will defer to Assistant City Manager hey. Susan to talk about this. We're talking about the P3. I, you the know, I was thinking that was it. Okay. Yeah. So to finish that thought, the manager could write an information memo and say, we are proposing to share this current document on the P3 
with the ITF on October the 2nd for the point of view of bringing the, their opinions to you when it goes in front of the commission? Let me, let me, let me summarize. For me, I, I, I was kind of let lost in that. Yeah, What's that? Step back. Step back. Let me try and bring Susan up to, up to snuff yeah. this discussion. Okay. Okay. And I, I unfortunately I only have like a half hour. Oh, we can do this in okay. an hour. All right. The P3 agreement, which staff has just gotten, okay? Yeah. You, you may have, have more connection to it, but they, they tell no, us. No, no, we all got it Wait. yesterday evening. What? Yesterday evening, sorry. Yeah. The email this morning. Okay. Yeah. So we all got it yesterday evening, and you're going to take some time to look at it. The commission is anticipating, well, we, we're told the commission is going to vote on it at a regular meeting on October 18th. Correct. Okay. She says that, correct. Okay. Yes, so I mean, yeah. That's yes. Yeah. So we feel very strongly as a task force that we would like to see the document and give the commission comments on it. Well, I mean, it's a public record right now. Is it? Is yeah. It? Okay. Yeah, I mean they typed confidential on it, but it's not. So that we will. It's a it's a public record right now. Again, it's a draft, and we haven't had the opportunity to, to. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Let us get a copy of the draft. Yeah, I don't think there's yes. any reason why not. Now, keep in mind we've all participated in putting together a term sheet, which is the basis for that. Now we have to make sure that the 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 draft agreement is consistent with what we put in the term sheet. Oh. Of course, and that's what we're going to do, but it's a public record right now. So. Okay. okay, so we will share that. Excellent. So, Peter, getting back to you, we will have between now and our next meeting to look at this, and we will discuss it at our next meeting. That will be October 3rd. Okay? Question. You got wait, one. Wait. You got I'm one. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just, try, I'm just trying to plan this out. So we will have an opportunity we'll on October 3rd amongst ourselves. I mean, that we, you know, we look at this, we have the and we can make a, a list of questions, issues, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, what I mean, happens to that list of questions, yada, yada, yada? Well, How does it get the to the commission to other than a communication? But that's just in order to do apples to apples. That's a, Write it down and just give it to us. We can't. No, no, I'm saying just. Yeah, that's the one. You pass Write down what you just said. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Expect from us this by okay. that date. We make a communication to the commission saying, saying uh, we 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 will be reviewing reviewing the draft comprehensive agreement agreement and discussing it at our October 3 meeting and anticipate anticipate providing you with comments with comments prior to comments prior to your voting on it. How is this communication going to go to the right now? This is going to be a communication to the commission. Let's hope it gets there in time. Let's 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 it, it'll get let's trust. Time, but let's trust that they will get it. But if if they have the the boilerplate for which this document was written and they haven't reviewed the document to see if it comply with the boilerplate, we're wasting our time. You've got a point. So we're wasting our time. I was going to ask the very same point. question. So All right, let's go back. we got a draft available, but will that draft be revised and there'll be a it final sure. presentation to the city commission? For voting, it, it will be revised, yeah. I'm sure, over the next well, yeah, three to four I, weeks, and then the final version will be presented to them. <laughs> yeah. And when but, does the city commission first see it? Not till the final. They don't see the draft. Unless they asked for it. Right. But. Yeah. So if they asked for it, they could see the draft. Yep. My, my right. guess is they they would see the final coordinating draft a week or two before the meeting, so they can mm -hmm. get comfortable. Yeah. But I mean, if you're interested in seeing what the work that's been done to date, I mean, that draft we is... We definitely, definitely yeah. want to see the draft, okay? okay? We want to see the draft. But I, James is right. Final. Why should we... Well, we need well, to find, you're right. That's what we need. We need to what? We need to see the final. That's right. Oh, well, sure, we need to see yeah. the final, but we're not going to see the final until they see the final. <laughs> no. And they're going to vote on the final immediately upon seeing it, reasonably so. Wait, wait, um, We've learned in the past that mm -hmm. only one person from the task force can speak. That's right. So I think someone should be prepared to speak that night. 
on October 18th? Yes. Yeah, what, what is that one person going to say? They're going to say you what, screwed the, us? what we're saying. We exactly what read we're saying. whatever our communication is, whatever, you know. Just, I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know what this looks like even. I, oh, but Peter. I just want to see it. It's, so they have been negotiating this now for getting on for or more than six months. So I have to believe it's getting pretty close to its final form. And I think we have to accept that whatever form it is in, and I'm guessing it is well over 90% complete, that's what we have to work with. It just is what it is. So you're not as concerned about um, uh, what uh, Roosevelt was concerned with? Yeah, I can't imagine. Well, I am so concerned let's go back. because there could, there could be a, you know, something we really think is very important and it looks all right and it gets changed at the 11th they could, they hour. Could. But, um, so do you want to go back to we will be reviewing the draft comprehensive agreement at our October 3rd meeting? safe with that either way. Either yes. Safe? That should go regardless. Okay. Yes. So Can somebody I, make a motion? Yes, I'm, that's what I was going to say. I feel that should be in the form of a motion. Okay, it's got to be a motion. Yes. So I, I'm, I make a motion that, whatever, can you read what you said? We will be reviewing, to the commission. Yes. We will be reviewing the draft comprehensive agreement and discussing it at our October 3rd meeting and ant anticipate providing you with comments. Yes, we... I make a motion. I make a motion that the infrastructure task force will be will be reviewing the public record draft comprehensive agreement comprehensive agreement at its meeting on October the third, and uh, anticipate providing the commission with comments as a result of that. Sounds good. Prior to their prior to their vote. Prior to, prior to their voting. Prior to prior to a commission vote on the P3 agreement. Okay, so let's give her a moment to digest that and repeat it to us. The task force will be reviewing the public record draft comprehensive agreement and discussing it at our October 3rd meeting and anticipate providing the city commission with comments prior to a commission vote on the P3. Any seconds on that? Second. Second. I got two seconds. We'll take we'll take Gerald as a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. Did you have any questions on the financing structure? The financing structure. Uh, yes, yes, we, we yes. spent we spent many hours <laughs> looking at this and trying to figure out how a hundred. At? Oh, 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 how, I how, hundred, how <laughs> okay. something on your phone. How one hundred thirty-six percent of Peter's water bill? They're, they're more worried about the water bill. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. About, and I was worried about what James was worried about, and that is what started out to be a hundred million is now one hundred forty-two million, and this one's starting at four eighty-five. But yeah. can we start with an easy question on why are we now putting in city funding to this? Well, when the when the costs went up a hundred million dollars, we were looking at ways of having a lesser impact on ratepayers. Um, so during the negotiations, that's when we said, "Hey, our cost of capital is less, somewhere between fifty and a hundred basis points, and we'd like to finance that." And and again, it was in order to um, negate some of the increase in costs um, to the ratepayers. And in addition, what we um, negotiated was carving out the chemical budget. Um, and so rather than us paying them with a markup and then they pay sales tax, we're going to do a direct purchase of chemicals um, that we have some economies of scale from the other plant. And again, we don't pay sales tax. So those were things that we negotiated as a result of the, the price increase, again, trying to negate the impact on the ratepayer to whatever extent we could. Mm -hmm. You don't so what, I mean, it's, a, it's, you know, when you're spending half a billion dollars, it's, you know, it costs, uh, it costs a lot of money. I'm, I'm, where's the value in having a P3? Well, there's the, the value. When we're doing all of this. Okay. I, I think in how quickly the, the project can be completed. Um, time. So time, number one, they're further along in design than we would have been. Um, and time is money. Um, so if the project doesn't come until two years down the road, that 485 could be a larger number. So the city couldn't have purchased someone to design this for them instead of going into a P3 arrangement. 
That's water under the bridge, James. It's I mean, we, we could have, but it's water under. This I, was a decision that was. It makes made. me. It makes me hard. Makes, it hurts my heart. But we got to go with what we got here. I, I know, but we've just heard these reasons why, you know, the rates are going up, so we're doing this different, now we're doing that different. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, like I said, the whole goal of us doing the financing was to try to, you know, offset some of the rate what's, impact. What's the downside to our balance sheet? Really not. I mean, we're going to, the water and sewer fund is going to issue that debt. Right. Um, we have to have, as as they must, must have told you, the rate increases to support. Um, putting the debt on the books. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, it's... But it, but it cuts into our ability to, you know, it, it, we ain't, the city as a whole can only... No, they're, they're two different things. And someone asked, actually asked that question at the commission meeting the other day. So the water and sewer fund issuing this debt will have no impact on our ability as a city to issue debt from the general fund. Well, we, that's not our question. Okay. Our question is, we in, in the enterprise fund, we yep. are paying off old bonds. We're yep. paying off uh, uh, the first two hundred million. Yep. We're going to be paying off the second two hundred million. Yep. Now we're going to be paying off seventy five percent of four hundred eighty five million. A million. Yeah. I mean, as long well, as the rates are in place to support the debt go. service. Yeah. As long as we keep raising the rates, we can borrow till the cows come home. I, Even after they get here. Even the. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as long as the rates are in place to support. Which gets us back the to the debt rates. service. Yep. The documents that we've seen so mm -hmm. far say that it will our water rates, our rates will go up 136 percent over a 10 year period. Correct. So Peter is now paying twenty eight dollars a month for water. Okay. Four thousand gallons. Four thousand gallons. But but that's his thing. Yeah. Twenty eight percent. At twenty eight dollars. Okay. What is one hundred thirty six percent of twenty eight dollars? We had that on the slides that we shoot. Yeah. Oh, here we oh, yeah. go. Well, that, so, was, that was the older version, the one you wanted. This was the water and sewer. Oh, that's it's, the one that has the water and sewer. Right. Okay. So for a 5,000 gallon a, yeah, a month customer, if he's four, um, it would go up to 73. So he's going up to 73. Well, just on and, that's, and currently that is 31. So if you're 28 at four, it's yeah. $31. For five. So thirty one. Um, so that thirty one turns into seventy three. Thirty one's going to seventy three over how many years? Ten. So that's um that's a forty two increase right. in thirty one. So that's, that's forty two yeah. forty two so divided by Alan Alan was explaining to us and I just want to be hundred percent clear on this. That 135 percent. Yeah. Yeah. So what I want to be really clear on is that that projection includes not only the increase in the water the water rate attributable to building this plant, but it includes all of the other bills plus the everyday yeah. appreciation. Regular inflation is already included in there. So that's not on top of the rate increases that we already anticipated. Those are built into that as well. So that's th those aren't on top of that. That includes, that's all in. So with annual inflation, the debt service for the new bond, all that is already baked into that. Yeah, it looks like it's 3.6% increase for the water portion. After five years. Yeah, right. So that's the regular uh, increase that would occur. And for the sewer, it looks like it's seven or eight percent depending on which year you're yeah. in. But this, is the sewer, uh, is there something coming out of the P3 agreement that affects the sewer no, rates? Nothing, nothing. No. The, but so it's all within the same financial models. Right. Still so. predicated on the amount of water used, it, which it has a, how is the wastewater is determined for price. Right. So that's uh, the percentage. Um, I don't if yeah, I know. Yeah, go right um, my, my concern from an engineer, I mean, engineer perspective, is, um, is it the design, the quality of water? I mean, I went through a whole slew of different uh, instances of, uh, throughout uh, Florida and throughout the country on P3 projects, even desalination plants in San Diego and anyway, uh, where 
things just didn't quite work out the way they were supposed to. And I guess from my perspective, not that I'm going to be the great uh, one to find stuff, but generally I have uh, some concepts of water treatment and I would like to somehow look at it to see if things are making a little bit sense. You mean the technical aspects of the design? Aspects. I don't know. We, we have a look at that with Hazen, the, the reviews that yeah. we have. <laughs> we, so we, that's been very detailed. Okay. And yeah, we we got down to the basics. So Any more financial nope. things? Because okay. yeah, I'm, I'm not just, the technical. No. Just quickly, ha switching to the city funding 75%, do you have a approximate ballpark as to how much money that saves? Actually, yeah, it was, was it 100 million? I, I can oh, forward no. that to Alan to get to you. Because um, our financial advisor actually ran the numbers compared to them doing the financing and us, and it was like a hundred million over the thirty years. That's but because of our ability to borrow much cheaper, right? right. Yeah. Again, it's somewhere between fifty and hundred basis points. So, um, but I can I can get you that exact. I'm just coming from memory right yeah. there, and I don't know if I remembered that number exactly. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you, you for your public uh, document uh, input on that. Uh, that you provided because we were trying to ascertain looking at uh, something to try to be positive. You know, oh, what, yeah, I'm happy to explain anything. Um, I, I think we kind of, like I said, summarized on that table as much as we could. But yeah, I'll, I'll tell you how much we save by us doing the financing. Now, obviously, we have an issue. The debt won't be issued till like six months after the comprehensive agreement, so interest rates could go up they could go down but they would have for them anyway it's all kind of the relative the so the price could go up between now and when they no once we sign the agreement that 485 sign on the bottom is, line is done it's that's done and, that, but just our financing cost you know obviously we don't know that until we take that to market right and right. if they build right. it for less than 485 they keep it if they keep it if they build it for more than 485 they eat it okay but but you know how that go it's called change orders well, no. that's what these guys are in charge of making sure there aren't, right? You okay. use, use the same criteria as you're doing on the police uh, headquarters. Yeah. Where they, they have a ceiling and they can't raise it. Alan, can I, it's, it's four, it's 4.30, I think we're, we're, these, I've seen this presentation. This I've video, seen it. This video is about half an hour. Yeah, no, yeah. I've seen it. Um, Alan, I have a feeling that when you go to get us that draft thing. I just pulled it up now and I'm getting ready to. Okay. Ms. Eddie, and she'll send it to all of you. Okay, oh, and we'll leave in your good hands the communication to the commission. Yes. That's it. Anybody have anything else they want to discuss? Just to thank uh, our friends here at the, the city, mm -hmm. all of you, you. For, for you know helping us under, yes, better understand yeah. the sequences of, of this important uh, project. Okay. It could be. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Everybody have a Motion to adjourn. 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 Motion to adjourn.